Have you spent time in Dead Rising's Willamette Parkview Mall and are finding things a little difficult? Well, today I have a list of 10 beginner tips that may just help you out. Without any further delay, let's begin. There are powerful weapons available as early as the very beginning of the title. When the zombies burst in through the front door of the entrance plaza, if you take a large bench best used for clearing clusters of the undead, one of the infected will drop a shotgun. Be sure to grab this as soon as it's dropped. Also, in Paradise Plaza, the second floor to the right of where you exit the warehouse, there's a store called Columbian Roastmasters. Heading inside and then to the viewing railing to the rear, if you hop the rail onto the canopy, there's a nice little katana for you to grab. Lastly, if you head to the food court around this location marked, there's a submachine gun readily available at Chris's Fine Foods. At the restaurant's entrance, there's a large mustache mascot sporting a chef's hat. Climbing atop this structure, you'll spot the conveniently placed weapon. There are many other weapons scattered throughout the Willamette Mall for the taking, but these are but to name a few in the areas you'll visit very early in the story. Racking up prestige points are vital in Dead Rising. This is how Frank becomes faster, stronger, and gains increased health bars, among other things. These points can be accumulated in a manner of ways, including killing zombies. Instead of rushing through your melee weapons, which don't always have the longest lifespan, if you head to the west side of the mall, across Leisure Park, at the location marked, you'll find a couple of vehicles available. A sports car and a motorcycle. These vehicles have much higher durability, granting you the ability to mow down as many of the undead as you see fit. A little additional tip, head to the nearby underground car park when doing this, as there's literally hundreds upon hundreds of the undead located there. Also, be sure to grab the tunnel maintenance key from down here, granting access to all of the locked doors, making travelling much easier. Around the mall, you'll come across several bookstores, but books can be found almost anywhere. These books are helpful in upgrading Frank as long as they are kept on his person. Some offer longer lasting weapon durability, increased health boost when consuming food or drink, and others that will make the survivor stronger and increase the damage dealt by Frank's melee attack. Also, if you have more than one of the same type of skill book, the specific increase will be multiplied. Skill books aren't the only items that can be combined. Several foods and drinks can also be mixed in a blender for greater effect. In the Columbian Roastmasters store we explored earlier, there's a menu detailing one of these mixtures and the temporary effects it has on Frank, but it's best to try a few combinations out for yourself. A few examples of the mixes include the Energizer, produced by combining an apple and a cabbage or lettuce, which grants Frank to be on ninjas for 10 real-time seconds, or the combination of a baguette and coffee creamer, creating zombies, attracting the undead towards Frank. This one is especially handy when escorting survivors. On a side note, while still at the Columbian Roastmaster store, there's a refrigerator containing an unlimited amount of orange juice to replenish Frank's health, and considering it's very close to the starting location, it's very handy to the player. Whilst we're discussing survivors, here's a couple of handy things to know when dealing with them. Frank will learn of the locations of most of the mall survivors through radio calls received by Otis, and upon locating them, each will have their own needs and wants. For example, some may be hungry, and others may prefer a specific weapon type. It's important to pay attention to these things, as it increases their chance of survival. Survivors are also useful in pointing out hidden things to Frank, such as prestige point photo opportunity locations and hidden weapons, so pay attention when they're talking. Lastly, some survivors may need assistance in making it back to the security room, such as holding hands or physically carrying them. Whilst doing this, Frank can easily manoeuvre through the crowds of zombies, so don't worry too much about stopping mid-travel just a battle. Speaking of prestige points, there's more ways to earn them other than just killing zombies, escorting survivors and taking pictures. Interacting with the environment can also unlock secretly hidden points. For example, in the Alfresco Plaza in the southern districts of the mall, there's a gymnasium called Flex. Gaining access, Frank can utilise the equipment such as the treadmill and punching bags to gain additional PP. Using all types of equipment will also grant bonus points. Secondly, back at Chris's Fine Foods where we discovered the submachine gun earlier, upon the wall there are model plates which Frank can destroy, each providing hidden prestige points, and upon destroying them all, bonus points are added. On a side note, whilst in the food court, make sure to take pictures of the storefronts for additional prestige. There are many hidden opportunities such as this around the mall, so make sure to try a few. We discussed earlier about the use of vehicles used to mow down the undead, but there are further means of travel that can be used not only in the outdoor areas of the mall, such as the leisure park, but inside the mall as well. 
A few methods of travel can be utilised such as pedal bikes, but one that can be accessed right near the safe out exit in Paradise Plaza, second floor, is the skateboard, which can be found at the Sport Trans store. The skateboard can not only be used as a weapon, but can also be used at its original intended purpose, allowing Frank to whiz past the zombies at an accelerated rate. Although difficult to get to if you're not armed to the teeth, there's a gun store in the North Plaza. You'll want to get there as quickly as possible, as after a short while, the psychopathic owner of the store, Cletus, will emerge and defend his property. Stay back! I trust those damn zombies about as far as I can throw them, but I trust people even less. Don't shoot! Look, let's talk to over. You can talk to my 12 gauge! Don't get no closer, or I'll blow you all to kingdom come! Hey. In this store, you'll find shotguns, pistols and sniper rifles. This is normally the first stop I make when starting a new game and I would suggest you do the same. The weapons acquired here can prove very useful when it comes to not only fighting off hordes or taking down enemies from afar, but taking on the many psychopaths of the title. Whilst we're discussing the psychopaths, it's important to pay close attention to their movements giving you the ability to learn their patterns. Many of the bosses will repeat Patton's moves, and at specific moments will become vulnerable. It's important to learn when these key moments occur, giving Frank the advantage. Also, one of the tougher boss battles occurs after 6pm in Leisure Park. Three convicts on a turret mountain stolen jeep patrol the park area, both running and shooting down not only the undead, but any survivors they encounter. These guys can be pretty tough to take down, with many gamers opting to take the higher ground and snipe them from afar, but just like the other psychopaths, they have flaws. The driver often crashes the vehicle, leaving the trio vulnerable for a short time. Using trees and apparatus for cover will also give Frank an advantage. After dealing with the convicts, Frank can not only access the jeep, but obtain the large machine gun from the rear, something I found very handy when dealing with another boss battle. For our final handy tip today, and this one's gonna sound a little out there, is to complete two separate playthroughs. With the title having an in-game time restraint on every single case or scoop, it's difficult to complete all in one play. What I would advise to do is maybe use one run to save all the survivors and defeat the boss battles, granting you high prestige points, then begin a second playthrough and complete the story. The story itself becomes increasingly more difficult as you progress, but one handy feature that can be used is to begin a new game using Frank's current save file. Frank is able to carry over his current ranking from this, making the second playthrough much easier. There are many small tips and hints that can assist you when playing Dead Rising, so if you guys wish to see a second take on this, let me know in the comment section. Do you have any useful tips that you've discovered along your way in your own playthrough? Please share with us below too. Hopefully you guys learned a thing or two from today's video, whether you're brand new to the title or have already spent a little time in the mall already. If you enjoyed what you saw today, you all know what to do, and if you're new to the channel and haven't subscribed already, please consider doing so. Thank you all for watching, you've been listening to Phil of Philby Gaming, and I'll see you in the next video.